Hey guys, and happy Witch Queen Day. The day has finally come and we have been blessed with a whole bunch of content to keep us going for a very long time. Now, I haven't finished the story or side missions just yet, as there's so much to do, but I do want to show off a relatively quick and pretty safe build that you can use while you carry on ranking up or attempt to do the more challenging content. If you remember my last Doomfang build, I mentioned in the video that we would get the option to throw a mini shield which would be really similar to how Sentinel Super would be. Well, I was right, and boy have I got some treats for you. With this build, you have unlimited overshields on demand, fast super regeneration, void AoE clearing options, 50% damage reduction, and many, many more. You're gonna love this if you ever want to try endgame with a safe setup, or just want some fun. Either way, this build is packing heat and you'll not want to miss it. But you know what else packs some heat? This channel right here, and if you enjoyed the content, then do leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications as it really does help me out. So, starting off with the voice subclass, we'll be following a method of allowing us to have pure overshields and explosions on demand, and how you pick this will be down to what type of playstyle you'll want. You'll need to make sure you have the shield throw melee option available, as this will allow you to throw your shields and also gain back overshields for each combatant touched by it. This is important, as Doomfang Pauldrons and Monte Carlo will be used to create an infinite source of shields, melee and super energy to you. You'll then want to pair this up with the Bastion aspect, where casting a super will grant you and your allies the overshield, shield, and using your barricade will do the same. Controlled Demolition aspect is what the name suggests, hitting a combatant with void abilities will make them volatile and cause them to explode, and chain their effects. Fragment, you'll then want to have Echo of Explosion, which will cause targets to explode from void ability kills. Echo of Leeching, where melee fire blows start health regeneration for you and nearby allies. And Echo of Persistence, which will increase the duration of void buffs applied to you, so for example overshields, will be extended by an extra few seconds. What you get is a build designed around overshield gameplay for you and your allies as best as you can, and support them with extra level of defense so that they don't die so easily. For us, we can create an endless pool of shielding via our melee, and from here we'll cause combatants to explode and chain their void effects onto others nearby, and generally clear out areas in seconds. From this, we should be able to proc an overshield for ourselves, gain increased super energy via Doomfangs, and at the same time provide health regen to our teams and overshields via our super or barricades ourselves. It's a simple but incredibly powerful build designed around supporting in mind. Now to expand on the build a bit further, we have our melee at 100 so we can passively gain our melee over time, although if you're using a Monte Carlo or Traveller's Chosen, then this can be lowered down depending on the activity you play it in. I also have the heavy handed mod attached, which will allow me to regain half of my melee energy back once charged with light. This is useful as in case you're not able to use Monty, you'll be guaranteed to get your melee energy back up within seconds. At the same time, it can also help with Monty boosting your melee recovery faster if you don't proc the chance to get your full melee back via its exotic traits. And lastly, we then have the Well of Tenacity mod for the 50% damage reduction, which is great on this build as we can proc it multiple times as long as we activate our melee while making mod. It all looked confusing at first, but honestly, it's very simple. Just throw your shield and let the rest fall in place. So now this leads us to weapons, and truth be told, as endgame isn't really a thing at the moment, we can use whatever loadout you like as long as you have the following mods and fragments used. In my case, I just went with a mid to close range setup that complements the setup pretty well, such as using Monte Carlo to reduce my melee cooldown as fast as possible. Using this weapon has allowed me to get a constant overshield on demand, and pretty much is a requirement for making the build as effective as shown. You can also use Traveller's Chosen instead, or Weapon with Wellspring, but you must make sure you have max strength stat and a weapon that can proc orb the light very quickly. This is just to make sure that the heavy handed mod is always active for you so you don't always have to wait around for so long, and also as backup in case things go bad. For our secondary, we have the Enigma Glaive, which is a new weapon type and oddly very fun to use no matter the content. The ability to use the weapon as both a melee or projectile as you please is very handy for such a build that plays within a close to medium range setup. The version I have is okay, as it has unrelenting attach which will trigger the health regen, and psycho hack which will lower a target's damage output for a short duration. But this can all be easily approved on with other perks that I can roll with. For the time being, it has aided me very well, 
but when I get a chance to, I will try and get a version with more damaging perks instead, since we don't need more healing that we already have. For Heavy, we have the Palmyre B rocket launcher with Impulse Amplifier and Lasting Impression with the Hacky Breach Armor's additional perk. Now listen, try and get this roll if you can as this thing is very powerful against vehicles or anything touched by stasis. Now although we don't face a lot of vehicles in game, the chances we do will be very helpful to have just in case. Plus this weapon against mini bosses and bosses still make it very viable thanks to the incendiary ability to track targets. Heavy is honestly your pick, but the rocket launcher has promise. For stats, strength is your one main stat that you want to heavily invest in, and then your resilience and intellect stat will follow up once your strength stat is at the relevant level. As mentioned before, your strength should ideally be at 80 to 100, and then the rest filled in by mods or perks, as ideally you want to passively gain melee energy back while out of danger, or not using your weapons such as Monte Carlo. Now I have mentioned how Heavy Handed and Monte Carlo will be doing all the work, but we do also have a few other mods in play, such as the Mini Kickstart mod, which will provide energy when our melee is completely out of use. We then have the Mini Wallmaker mod, which will create a wall upon a successful melee kill, and this will link back into the Well of Tenacity and Heavy Handed mod. You'll then also want to have the Invigoration, Absolution, and Distribution mod, which will all play a major role in your ability cooldown rates. And then lastly, we have the Radiant Light mod for that plus 20 in strength, which is very helpful for maxing this style very quickly. This should all solidify your mini stat for good and allow you room to expand from there if done correctly. Resilience now can be left at 50 since we have the Utility Finisher mod available that can restore our class ability straight away for a price of 1 tenth of our super upon finishers. Intellect is at 60 and is at a relatively safe spot to aim for since we have the hands on mod and Doomfang Pauldron exotic trait. Now, if you have the space, you can also put in the Fondle Wisdom mod for that quick super regen over time, but only if you feel it's necessary. This should cover all the mods that, personally to me, you'll need, but once we get the room to expound on this a bit more and try again later for endgame, I'll definitely see if there will be things I can mix up with it. So, here are the mods compiled into one to make it easier to take notes. For Head, we have Strength, Hands On, Harmonic Siphon, and Elemental Charge mod. Arm, we have Strength, Midi Kickstart, and Midi Wellmaker mod. Chest, we have Minor Strength, because of Damn the Times 2 and Heavy Handed mod. Leg, we have Strength, Absolution, Invigoration, and Radiant Light mod. Mark, we have Strength, Utility Finisher, Distribution, and Well of Tenacity mod. Now, in my previous work, I mentioned how once Roy 3.0 comes, the following build could be very powerful depending on the fragments aspects provided, and how this will overall affect Doomfangs. We didn't get a setup of fragments such as Defensive Strike, Turn the Tide, Tactical Strike, and In the Trenches in one like I imagined, but we were very close to it, and some of the past perks mentioned are still around, but just in a different format as of now. We do however have a build designed around safe passage for solo or groups of players that take on challenging content and need an extra level of support that may not be available straight away. The ability to get overshields whenever you like and get your team overshield when they need it is something I can see being very viable once more endgame content becomes known. And then the additional healing, wide void AoE explosion, increased damage, and damage reduction is something I could see becoming viable in master content with the absolute ease for breezing through content. I can't say for sure that this build will be useful for Grand Masters, since your shield attack will need to kill my local combatants within one hit at least, and having World of Tenacity mod is very tricky to work with, considering how it's got a limited time to it. However, we can make combatants volatile on touch, which is useful for doing large amount of damage quickly, and in GMs, this could be absolutely necessary for certain sections. Well, a tenacity now can be swapped out for protective light, and although that's been nerfed down to 10%, its effects would still be very strong with such a setup in mind. You just need to make sure you place your barricades down more often so you can prevent team wipes from occurring. Compared to the last version I did, I believe this version is a lot safer to use at distance, and this could make it viable for whatever content you have in mind. You can even swap out the super for bubble instead, which will be more viable for grand masters in general, so straight away you have the option to expand on what you have while not losing out on the core of the build. This is definitely an interesting build that I'm quite glad to revisit again, seeing I can now offer so much more to users. 
So now I'll leave the rest for you guys to take away from there. And generally, tell me what your thoughts are on the build. Go ahead, leave a comment and let me see what you got. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with any new changes. Once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next one.